My name is Dr. Lori White, Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs at Washington University, and welcome to what is going to be a very important, interesting, and thought-provoking dialogue about freedom of expression at Washington University. And I'm joined today by Chancellor Andrew Martin, Holden Thorpe, and three Washington University students, Drew McPike, who is president of the College Republicans, David Leone, who is student representative to the Board of Trustees and co-founder of Alpha Psi Lambda Fraternity, a Latinx fraternity on campus, and Shalon Lomax, who's the Director of Diversity Initiatives for Stud Life, the Washington University student newspaper. And so I'd like to start first with you, Chancellor Martin, and if you would give us your definition of freedom of expression. So we're in the ideas business uh, here at the university. Um, and most of what we do are actually find ideas uh, that are wrong uh, uh, on, on a search to try to find uh, the truth that lives out there. And so as you think about the freedom of expression and you think about that marketplace of ideas, it's really important uh, for us to be able to have conversations uh, about just about everything, right? To throw things on the table, uh, to call out bad ideas when we see them, um, and ultimately uplift uh, the good ones. Because we're in the academic uh, universe, right, this is bedrock for us. Right? If, if, we're gonna, if we're gonna call certain things uh, out of bounds, um, if we're not gonna look critically um, at certain issues, um, we're ultimately not gonna get to the right answer. And so that's why it's so important um, on a college campus in particular uh, for us to embrace the idea uh, that every idea uh, can be thrown on the table and every idea can be refuted. I guess one of the things I think about is making sure that we have an environment where uh, everyone feels comfortable and capable and has the opportunity to express the views that they may have. Uh, and if I look at sort of the progress that has happened in this country over 400 years, most of it has been because people had the ability to express their views about how, how things could could and should change. To me, freedom of expression is the ability to uh, share information that also backs up those views. I think when people share their perspectives or they're talking about issues with their friends or in the classroom, it's never just I'm making a blanket statement and then, you know, going to sit back in my seat and not actually uh, share why I have that perspective. So I think it's also important for people to add in that second component of being able and willing to um, support whatever claims or perspectives or thoughts that you have. I think that's something that happens a lot at this school uh, where there are students who are very open and receptive to having that debate and having um, those conversations and that dialogue, but it's also about making sure that students are also comfortable and that that dialogue doesn't um, uh, overstep with who they are or their identities or where they come from. So just making sure and being cognizant of that as well. Shalani, you write for uh, our student newspaper, Stud Life, and Stud Life did an interview with Chancellor Martin uh, when he first arrived about freedom of expression. And one of the things uh, that you said, Chancellor Martin, uh, is that you thought that we needed to create space for students, faculty, and staff to have these meaningful dialogues with one another, uh, and that the university's responsibility was to create space and platforms for these conversations to take place. So what are some of the ways that you think we could create these kinds of spaces and platforms so that this meaningful dialogue really does indeed occur? Uh, in that quote that I gave to Student Life, uh, in that discussion, I talked a lot about dialogue. Right. Washington University is not a cable talk show. Right. Um, our job is not to yell at each other in a provocative way. Right. Our job is to sit down with one another to talk about important issues um, and ultimately try to move the ball forward. Right. That requires one to listen, uh, to put yourself in someone else's shoes. And we're not all going to agree on everything. In fact, we're not going to, most of us aren't going to agree on just about anything. Um, and that's one, of the, that's one of the really rich opportunities of being on a college campus. And if you look, look um, at college campuses over the last 10 years or 50 years or the last 200 years, the most significant changes that have been made by universities um, have been led by the students. And I think another thing that we need to be proud of is our independent student newspaper because it provides a platform uh, for students collectively uh, to be able to be critical of what's going on on our campus and I think that's a great thing. 
Drew, you're president of the College of Republicans on campus, so what has it been like for you to be a member of a group of students on campus when surveys say that many students in higher education lean to the left? Well, it certainly could be difficult because it's hard to find people that might share some of your fundamental beliefs and values, and that's something that you know people look for in friends and you know uh, long-term relationships. I mean, you want to have a base that you can build off of, but I think it's also really important to remember that even though you know most of this campus would disagree with me on a variety of issues, that um, at the end of the day, there's going to be a lot of common ground, and there's going to be a lot of things that uh, we like that aren't related to politics and or you know other fundamental uh, beliefs. So you all are all involved in different student organizations on campus and different communities and how is your involvement in your various communities um, challenged and or affirmed by your particular identity and perspective? Not everyone thinks alike within our group and not everyone thinks alike on campus and so I think it's very important to remember that even though you might come in with some assumptions, um, they can be broken down really easily as you get to know the person more. And I think that's really important for people to keep in mind as we move forward uh, as a university that, you know, even though there are a lot of assumptions that can come about a bunch of different identities, it's really important to get to know the person themselves because that's where, you know, you get to get the most rewarding experience from learning about someone. How can we work together uh, as faculty, staff, students, and administrators to protect freedom of expression on our campus as a key foundation of a Washington University education? Uh, uh, obviously, um, there are things that cross the line, things like harassment and so forth, uh, which aren't acceptable in this community or any other community uh, for that matter. Um, but at times, it's actually a good thing for our community. Uh, to have speakers who are here uh, same uh, challenging orthodoxy um, uh, and, uh, and at times making us feel uncomfortable with our ideas. Uh, what's the best way to deal with that uncomfortableness? Not to run away from the bad ideas, uh, but actually to bring thought, to bring reason to the table. Um, one of the things that we can do as an institution, um, particularly in a situation where we're going to bring controversial speakers to campus, is make sure that we have platforms that are available uh, for people who can uh, provide some contrary views uh, in the public discussion. Part of the strength of America is that we have all these narratives. And it's absolutely correct that some, some of the narratives haven't gotten as much voice as others. But over time, there's this sorting process that goes on and uh, you know, it's, it's just so inspirational to think about the African American story in America, the LGBT story in America, the Republican story in America, the Democratic story in America. All these different stories are what make this country uh, such an amazing place. And of course, also create a lot of challenges, but we're producing students who are going to go out there and figure out what to do with all of that. And so making sure they have the facts about things that have gone on and the tools to analyze them and uh, the, the courage to engage with ideas that they don't agree with. Uh, these are, are the fundamental ways that, that progress will happen. And, you know, a lot of our students are going to lead many, many important things. And it would be a lot easier to be a leader if you only did things that you agreed with. But most leaders who lead multi-stakeholder, complex organizations have to balance sometimes processing and thinking about things that they don't agree with. And if we're going to produce the leaders of the future, we need to produce people who can do that. And so then how do we work together as a campus community, faculty, staff, students, and administrators uh, to continue to hold this really strong value on freedom of expression, knowing that we all have different ideas, identities, perspectives on a range of issues. So how do we work together as a campus community to affirm freedom of expression? I think there's a couple of things uh, that, that, that to, to be done as a community. One, I think, is for us uh, in, 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 in regular and consistent ways uh, to talk about freedom of expression as something that's of fundamental importance to the university. Um, our faculty have done that. 
uh, with their statements uh, having to do with academic freedom um, and the necessity of having freedom of expression as part of, of operating within uh, an academically uh, free organization. Um, I think it's important that we have an independent uh, student newspaper uh, with, for, for lots of voices at the table from leadership, uh, faculty and staff, and especially from our students to be able to talk about the importance of this on a regular basis is important. I think another thing that we should embrace as a community is really leaning into uncomfortable situations. Right? Go to a talk from a group who you might despise. Right? Go listen to a speaker who you're pretty sure is dead wrong on an issue that you care about to go and listen and engage in dialogue. And embracing that as part of what we should be doing in an academic institution. Now, that could go a long way uh, to, to, to breaking down some of the barriers between people and really get conversation going. Um, so for me, of course, I think using uh, different platforms to encourage dialogue uh, is, is really important. So there are spaces in which students have room to express their ideas and you know, support them with fact, of course, um, in a way that's fun, in a way that allows you to breathe, in a way that, um, that has reach, right, where people can sort of see what you think. Um, everything doesn't have to happen in an enclosed space. Um, but I also think consistency is really important, which someone else pointed out. Um, so being consistent is, is really important, I think. Just learn uh, and learn in any way, whether that's in the classroom, whether that's through your extracurriculars, whether that's through other students, through administration. Um, there are so many different opportunities and ways to learn at this campus, and students should just take those opportunities. Um, be uncomfortable take that position that like you don't think that you'd succeed in. But I think that's where a lot of change comes from and a lot of learning comes from. And being able to take that up and uh, just strive for like what you believe in um, while also being very receptive to what others believe in and how others feel and how like the community functions as a whole is incredibly important. So before we wrap up what's been a great discussion, anybody have any last words of wisdom uh, for our incoming students, uh, words of advice that you want to impart to them? I would say that these four years are going to be the most, some of the most formative of your life. And um, you're going to meet amazing people who come from lots of different places and have lots of different views. And you're gonna take incredible classes with professors that really shape your thinking and shape your mind and make you a better, um, a better thinker, a better academic, all those things. Um, I would say, as Drew said, you know, embrace the situations, embrace the uncomfortable, um, lean in and really let this be a place where you are shaped and where, um, you are pushed to grow in different ways that you wouldn't on your own. I think that's really what college has been for me. Um, I've really transformed and grown as a person um, by being put in situations that I never would have voluntarily put myself in or um, I, I just couldn't have grown on my own. I couldn't have grown in isolation. And so I think college is a great place for you to um, work on becoming the person that you want to be. I think it's really good for everyone to lean into the diversity you're going to run into in college. I know that I came from somewhere, a little small town where, you know, it's a lot of people that are just like me. And so coming to, uh, you know, St. Louis and a university that, I mean, has more students, like you know, seven times more students than my hometown. So um, coming to somewhere that's so diverse, it's great to meet all these new types of people. And I think it's really important to, uh, you know, really enjoy that because um, especially for someone who this was the first time he's really been able to get out into a larger community. Uh, I, I found that to be one of the most rewarding experiences in my time here. So make sure that you get out and learn about people other than your, that aren't like you. I would say uh, try to understand why things are the way they are. Most of the things that we deal with in this area, in this country, are understandable from the history and sociology of, of America and the world. And part of what college is about is developing the ability to understand why things are the way they are based on objective information. And so in addition to expressing oneself, understanding why we're in the moment that we're in, whatever that happens to be, is something that we want education to do. I think my best piece of advice is to enjoy the journey 
Uh, there are such a diverse set of experiences that can be had on this campus. No one student can have all of them. Uh, but there's so many different types of things going on, different types of experiences, um, and really embrace the idea uh, that this is a time for exploration. Uh, the purpose of this time, this formative time, uh, uh, is, uh, is to develop uh, understanding about the world uh, and also understanding about what your place in the world looks like. Uh, that's why we're here. Um, and so to lean into that journey, embrace that discursive journey as something that's a good thing, I think is really valuable. Well, thank you, Chancellor Martin, Holden Thorpe, Drew, David, and Shalon for participating in today's conversation. And we know that these dialogues across differences are not always easy, but you are now a part of a great diverse community that seeks to learn from one another. Great scholars and students alike learn from communication and collaboration across differences. May your time at WashU be both affirming and challenging, and I look forward to learning with you together. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.